The fundamental problem is that humans are extracting fossil carbon from the earth in the forms of, of oil, natural gas, coal, etc. And we're taking that fossil carbon and we, we, we burn it and it goes into the biosphere. That fossil carbon has been there for many millions of years, safely stored in the earth. So the climate, earth's climate, um, depends delicately on how much carbon is in the biosphere, essentially how much CO2 is in the atmosphere. And what we're doing is we're introducing tremendous, vast quantities of carbon that were safely stored in the earth, and we're introducing them to the biosphere. It's really that simple. You're just adding carbon. The carbon becomes CO2 in the atmosphere. You know, global warming has been around in the sort of scientific um, literature for a number of decades um, now, and there's been an awful lot of research on it. And of course, we don't understand everything uh, about and global warming and climate change, but we do understand the basics. By introducing more carbon into the environment, you generally raise the carbon dioxide, CO2 levels of the atmosphere. And the fundamental thing, the problem is that the CO2 absorbs energy and heats the atmosphere. It's, it's very simple physics, it's not debated. So that's, the, that's what fundamentally what's going on. There's a variability in the way the climate system operates. So from year to year, the temperature changes anyway, but there's an upward trend we can see from when the Industrial Revolution started, actually, when humans started to emit lots of CO2, um, of around about 0.8 degrees, maybe a little more. Um, there's a lot of variability in this. So in the recent past, there's been discussion of this thing called the hiatus, which is, is a, a supposed slowdown in global warming. But it looks like um, this year will probably be the warmest on record by a long, long long, long way. A difficulty, a scientific difficulty, is that um, generally the science has an error bar in it of a factor of two. Like, if you read studies, um, the Earth will warm by two to four degrees. We, we just can't nail it down any better than that. This, the science is fairly complicated. There are lots of things that happen to the carbon. So it's just a problem we have to live with, that we, we don't know whether it's two degrees or four degrees, or off into the future, whether it's four degrees or eight degrees. There's this error bar that's, that's pretty big that we just have to live with. Well, I mean, we're, we're looking, uh, you know, COP21 is focused on limiting global warming to two degrees um, C. That's gonna be very challenging. And, you know, we may be looking under some of the um, business as usual scenarios at four, uh, or even six degrees warming with respect to pre-industrial by the end of the century. And I think that really means, you know, significant um, perturbations to the um, Earth system. If we carry on going the way we're going though, we are probably going to, we would definitely blow the two degree target that the international negotiations are talking about out of the water. Um, and there's a danger we may get to four degrees, three to four degrees. Three to four degrees globally is bad news, but it means that over land where we happen to live, you're looking at more like five degrees. So quite often the way we frame this whole um, issue about climate change sort of downplays it. We take averages over the globe, which means that you know two thirds of the globe is water. You're mostly getting the sea and the sea doesn't warm up as fast as the land. So even two degrees is quite significant because it means three or four degrees. It means maybe more than that in the, in the Arctic, big, big changes. So without that, you get all the usual associated effects. Uh, without dealing with climate change, you get the associated effects of warming, sea level rise due to um, just just uh, seawater expanding as you heat it up, an ice sheet melt that also can, can lead to significant sea level rise. Uh, you get change in the hydrological cycle, so when the planet's warmer, uh, more water's held in the atmosphere, that means that when it does rain, it tends to be heavier rain, so more floods, but also evaporation's faster if it's hotter. So you tend to get dry periods, get dry regions and periods getting dry. So there's a tendency for hydrological extremes to increase many changes in rainfall patterns, uh, you know, potentially changes in storms, all sorts of things that we know about, many other things that we don't know about. There are many unknown unknowns. There are, there are other problems, that, things that we don't know about, like tipping points, like we could get to a point where the climate shifts dramatically. We just don't know if that's possible or when it would happen. We don't understand everything uh, about um, global warming and climate change, but we do understand the basics. So I think uh, the, the basic understanding of global warming is sufficient uh, for the politicians to be able to make decisions. I don't think it's the science that's necessarily holding up the process on Earth. And the second thing about global warming is, it, although it's not, 
it's not yet very large compared to geological changes. It's very, very fast. The, the changes we, we can detect from the geological record and from ice cores are often bigger, but they are much slower.